today we're going to look at a nice limit that I found on the stack exchange. So here we have the limit as n goes to infinity of n times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n e to the x squared dx. And the idea here is to use integration by parts two different ways. Okay, so let's maybe start with an introduction of some notation. Let's set a sub n equal to n times the integral from 0 to 1 x to the n e to the x squared dx. Okay, good. And now from there, let's go up here and do our first round of integration by parts on this integral. Okay, so for the first round of integration by parts, we're going to set u equal to the entire integrand. So that'll be x to the n e to the x squared. And then dv will simply be the dx term. Okay, so let's take the derivative here. Observe that we need to use the product rule. So that'll give us something like this. We'll have n times x to the n minus 1 e to the x squared. And then we'll have plus 2 times x to the n plus 1 e to the x squared. And then this is all dx. So like I said, we used the product rule there. And then if dv is dx, that means that v is simply equal to x. And now we'll use the standard formula for integration by parts. So this is going to be equal to u times v evaluated at the endpoints minus v du, keeping in mind that we need to include this n out front. So let's see, that's going to leave us with n x to the n plus 1 e to the x squared we need to evaluate that from 0 to 1. And then minus v du. So that's going to be minus, we have n squared, and then the integral from 0 to 1 x to the n e to the x squared. And then let's see, it'll be minus 2 times n, and then it'll be the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n plus 2 e to the x squared dx. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. But now let's do this evaluation, which isn't too hard. If we evaluate this at one, we will get n times e. If we evaluate that at zero, we clearly get zero. And now let's look at this next bit. Oh, this integral right here is actually almost equal to our original thing. Observe here we have an n squared, here we have an n. So that's simply n times a to the n. And then over here, we'll have minus 2n over n plus 2 times a n plus 2, you know, using similar observation as we did before. Okay, well, now let's observe that we've got an a sub n here. We have an a sub n here. So let's put all those on one side of the equation and factor the a sub n out. So we have n plus 1 a sub n equals n times e minus 2n over n plus 2, a n plus 2. So there's this nice two-step recursion for our sequence. Now let's take this a n plus 2 and we'll maybe solve for it. So let's see, that's going to give us something like this. So it'll be n plus 2 over 2 times e. And then we'll have minus n plus 1 times n plus 2 over 2 times n times a n. So that's solving for a n plus 2. And now let's put that over here. So I'm just transposing this over. We have a n plus 2 is n plus 2 over 2 times e. And then minus n plus 1 times n plus 2 over 2 times n times a n. Okay, great. Okay, so we just derived the following recursive formula for our sequence. And now I think I misspoke before and said that we were going to do an integration by parts a second time, but in fact, we don't really need to do that. Now, if you've got a recursive sequence, a really kind of standard way of finding its limit is to use the monotone convergence theorem. But the monotone convergence theorem requires 
that your sequence be bounded and monotone. So we'll start by showing that this thing is increasing. And then after that, we'll show that it's bounded. Well, it needs to be bounded above if we're gonna show that it's increasing. Okay, so in order to show that it's increasing, we'll just in fact take the difference of a n plus one with a n and show that that is in fact positive. Okay, so writing this out, this will be equal to n plus one. We have our integral from zero to one, x n plus one, e to the x squared dx minus n integral from zero to one of x to the n, e to the x squared dx. Okay, so that's looking good. But now we're gonna write this in kind of a clever way where we group our coefficients of n, if you will. So this will be equal to the integral from zero to one, x to the n plus one, e to the x squared dx. So that's from this one multiplying through. And then after that, we'll have minus n, the integral from zero to one, x to the n times one minus x, e to the x squared dx. So that's the grouping that I was talking about. That's our trick. But now let's observe that the integrand here is positive, but what we really just need is this bit of the integrand as positive. So this is, well, I should say non-negative. That's bigger than or equal to zero on the required interval. And then also we have this nice bound for e to the x squared. So let's observe that one is less than or equal to e to the x squared is less than or equal to the number three on our interval from zero to one. I think that's pretty clear. It's a little bit loose at the top, but that's okay. But then negating, we have negative three is less than or equal to negative e to the x squared, which is less than or equal to negative one. And now we'll push this towards bigger things. So, or towards smaller things, I should say. So that means this whole expression here is bigger than or equal to the integral from zero to one of x to the n plus one dx, where here we replace e to the x squared with one, and then minus three times n, the integral from zero to one, x to the n plus, or x to the n, one minus x dx. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. And now we've in fact left ourselves with integrals that are not super hard to evaluate. And actually you can evaluate this down and you'll see that you get four n plus one over n plus one times n plus two, which is clearly bigger than zero. But if a n plus one minus a n is bigger than zero, then that means that yes, this is increasing. So I'll just put here a n plus one is bigger than a n. And maybe I'll put like a big check mark here to show that we just showed that. Now let's show that this thing is bounded above. Okay, so now we're gonna show that this thing is bounded. In fact, that will show that all the terms are less than or equal to three. So let's start with this recursion and let's solve it for a sub n for these purposes. So let's see, we'll have a sub n is equal to, well, so being careful to move things around, we'll have n over n plus one times e, and then it'll be minus two times n over n plus one times n plus two times a n plus two. Okay, so that's looking good, I think. So that'll leave us with a n plus two n over n plus one times n plus two times a n plus two is equal to n over n plus one times our number e. Okay, and then, well, let's recall, we showed that this thing was increasing, a n plus one is bigger than a n, but then that's true for all n. So in particular, we know that a n is less than a n plus two. Okay, so how can we make use of that? Okay, so let's switch the order of the equality here. So that means on the left-hand side, we'll have n over n plus one times e. And then we'll also replace a n plus two with a n. So that's gonna push the inequality in this direction. So what we'll have over here will be larger. So this is gonna be bigger than a n plus two n over 
n plus 1 times n plus 2 times a n. But now I can combine terms on the right hand side and this will leave us with, well it's kind of a crazy looking thing, it's n squared plus 5n and then plus 2 over n plus 1 times n plus 2 a n. So now we can like solve this for a n if you will and you'll see that a n is in fact less than, well we need to multiply this by the reciprocal of what we have over here. So observe that this like n plus 1 will cancel and we'll be left with n times n plus 2 over n squared plus 5n plus 2 times our number e. But now via polynomial long division, we can in fact write this as e minus, let's see, I think it's going to be 3n plus 2 over that denominator, n squared plus 5n plus 2 times another e. But let's maybe like factor that e and have this be uh, 1 minus this thing. So that's just like, like I said, doing polynomial long division on this rational function. Okay, but then we know that this rational function is approaching 0, this 3n plus 2 over the quadratic. That's because the degree of the denominator is larger. So that means for some value of n that's large enough, this whole thing right here will always be less than, let's see, well, it gets closer and closer and closer to 1 altogether, so it'll be less than 3 over e, and then we've got this times e here, which is equal to 3. And now, well, what's that value of n? Well, maybe I'll leave it to you to work that out. And then, well, technically we would need to check all of the cases before that as well. But again, that's just like a bunch of calculations. Okay, so, well, we showed that this thing was just bounded above now. So we have a n is less than 3, so we've got it's increasing, and now we also have that it's bounded above, which means we're good to go. And let's finish this thing off by calculating the limit. So we just finished proving that there was a limit to this sequence, and we also had this recursion. So now we'll, we can find the limit. So we have our limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is equal to, well that's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1 times e minus the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n times a n plus 2 over n plus 1 times n plus 2. But observe that this bit over here is going to definitely trend off towards 0. That's because this a n plus 2 is bounded and then the rest of it goes to 0. Oh, and then this bit right here that's left over, well the n plus 1 over, or the n over the n plus 1 will tend towards 1. So the whole thing tends towards the number e. And that's a good place to stop.